Now, I think that uh, we've got John 15, last two verses, uh, which are probably an add-on to what we've been discussing. Might even be a change of subject, but we can we can complete it. I've had a look ahead uh, to 16, which is not on the agenda, but uh, uh, there are maybe some things you want to look at in, in chapter 16. Anyway, let's have a, I'll read through John 15, 26 and 27. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you must test, also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus plans to send the Holy Spirit to us, um, and the Holy Spirit will come out from the Father to us, and he will testify about Jesus. The Holy Spirit, as far as I, I can tell, does not testify about himself, but always points to Jesus. That's, in a sense, that's, that's his job, if you like. Um, he seems to me to be, in some ways, a kind of silent partner in the trilogy. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I even changed. There's a song by Hillsong. It's, um, I, I forgot the name, but he, they say they have a place in there where they're singing glory to the Holy Spirit. So I, I think that's an error. So I just, I changed that to like glory to the Lamb. I'll say, <laughs> I'll sing when if I'm singing it myself. Yeah. Because, yeah. That's, that's, that's an interesting, Mickey. Um, I, uh, I think we're allowed to worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, 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 he is part of the Godhead. Um, anything else strike you from these two, two verses? A very important thing, in fact. I'm sure we all know, but uh, it is very important. What verses, again, are you referring to? Uh, John 15, verses 26 and 27. The last two verses. I I'm thinking about the end of verse 26. Uh, talking about the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, He will testify about me. Um. Many people seem to have uh, a difficulty with the Holy Spirit being a person. Um, I personally don't I just accept that's what Jesus said. I'm not sure I understand it fully, but the Holy Spirit is not an influence, uh, not a, a without. Um, he is a spiritual being. Jesus says, he will testify about me. But see, some people uh, talk about Holy Spirit as if it's some influence or something like that. Um, any thoughts in that direction? That, that's interesting because... Um... I heard somebody saying, speak, we, we speak of Jesus, not the Jesus. Yeah. And why don't we speak about Holy Spirit instead of the Holy Spirit? And I thought that was an interesting point. And they were yeah. just saying just the reverse, that, that it's pers personalizing him. Um, and, he's, and he's not just the it sort of thing, but he is Holy Spirit. So it's interesting how people look at things differently. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried to refer to him as not the, but 
out of habit. <laughs> Sometimes it just comes out the, especially if I'm around people saying the Holy Spirit. But to that point, I've tried to correct my, my, as that point has been brought up in conversation before, and I, it seemed pretty valid. So I tried to correct that. Well, it's kind of, it, it is kind of natural because Jesus was the only one of the three that took human form and, and walked among, um, among humans for uh, a lifetime. So there's, there's a, a measure of humanity involved with, with Jesus that the other two are more spiritual, um, than, uh, than, than human. In my opinion. I agree with that, Kim. That's, that's good. Owen, did you have your hand up? Did you want to say something? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, to, the scripture teaches us that, um, uh, that he's sending, that Jesus is going to send uh, the Holy Spirit. And, it, and it's the Father that's actually sending the Holy Spirit. And he's our guide, our teacher, our comforter, one who walks beside us as well as within us. And uh, to me, I, I look at him very much uh, as a partner uh, with Jesus and the Father. Um, and uh, understanding uh, the truth, understanding the word, uh, to me, that's Something that uh, is always growing in my understanding, and uh, I attribute that to uh, you know to him. Um, the fact that we're in the vines uh, is uh, extremely important because that's the um, the network that the Father has set up so that uh, we can uh, learn his ways. And it requires uh, quite a bit of uh, work on our part of, of grace and, and uh, holding on to uh, this is the culture of the kingdom of God and that I want to learn in every, at every level of, of my life. Um, so to me, it, uh, the Holy Spirit is very, very important, very uh, much involved. I'll, I'll stop there. I agree with that, Owen. And it worries me a little bit when we talk about um, um, we can relate better to Jesus Christ because he he, he was he is a man as, as well as God. Um, and then I reflect on what's happened within the Church of Rome with Mariology, how their, their idea is that Mary is both the mother of Jesus and can manipulate him like mothers can and is is human and can empathize with us but it doesn't that betray a faulty image of who our god is he knows everything both father son and holy spirit know everything everything about us they know our full uh, reality of our humanity um uh, both good and bad um and so there's a sense in which to say we can relate more to one compared to the other of the Trinity is, is, is perhaps um, a slippery slope. 
as we can see what's happened in the Church of Rome. And I think all our human interpretations are probably faulty uh, to a greater or lesser extent. Um, I, I I don't know a lot about uh, about Mary, and uh, I, I I know that she is very important to Roman Catholics. Um, but I I certainly don't have any great attachment to. Uh, uh, to her, um, she's a saint of God. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, just to return to uh, the, the Holy Spirit, um, I, I'm just reading at the beginning of John. Uh, the uh, John says. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, this is John 1, 33. And I myself did not know him, this is Jesus, but the one who sent me to baptize with water, God, uh, told me, the man on whom you see the, Holy, the, the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one, and that one is Jesus. Um. I think one of the, the things about the Greek translation is that there may not be a definite article before the Holy Spirit, the part of Holy Spirit. Um, but the definite article is, it may be there, I'm not sure, I'd need to check, but um, it may be implied uh, and, and translated as the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, indefinite articles uh, as are, and definite articles the uh, sometimes don't appear, uh, but they're implied. The only thing I have a little concern about referring to the Holy Spirit as Holy Spirit um, is that to me, not putting the in front of him. Uh, depersonalizes him for me. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me, it, it gives me the impression that somebody is accepting Holy Spirit as an influence in their life, but not as a person. For me, that is. Uh, I, I don't have any great feelings about it, but interestingly, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, Call the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. So that 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 causes me a little concern, um, and that they, they they I'm sure that they describe him, uh, and not they don't even refer to him as he, uh, but uh, he is described as an influence uh, in in the lives of a believer. <clears throat> so. Anyway, I, I I don't know if there's any place in Scripture where the Holy Spirit does not have the definite article in front of him, the Holy Spirit. But of all of the members of the Trinity, he is the only one without a name. Um, Jesus obviously is, has his name. Um, the Almighty God has many names. Um, and he they each reflect a different part of his character. Um, but the the Holy Spirit doesn't, um, and yet he is a person. Jesus refers to him as he all the time. He is not an influence, or it is not an influence. He is a person. Um. I can't explain that, but I'm convinced that's who he is. Um, so, I, and and he's a very special person. Uh, Jesus speaks very reverently about him, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he tells you that you you can sin against me, but 
whatever you do, don't sin against the Holy Spirit. Um, and um, anything that diminishes the Holy Spirit's importance, to my mind, is uh, I, I'm a bit cautious about uh, about that. Um, I, I wouldn't like to uh, diminish his importance in any way at all. Um, how, how do we? How, how do, does that sit with people? I'm very happy with what you're saying, Alan. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it answers the question of whether it's the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit or not, but I agree exactly mm -hmm. with what you're saying, that he yeah. is he is fully God, he is uh, fully personal, and he's critical. Yeah. I think we've but, got something I'll agree yeah. with. Yeah. But, but he points us to always to Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's somebody uh, <clears throat> said that the, the the Trinity, which none of us can understand. If anybody says they can understand the Trinity, uh, then don't believe them. <laughs> no, ma no matter how well they think they can understand the Trinity, um, uh, don't believe them. It, it doesn't matter. It's not that's not important. We're not asked to understand it with our minds. Uh, we are asked to accept it. Um, the, the Holy Spirit points to Jesus, Jesus points to the Father, and Jesus to the Father's Son. There's a, a whole lot of relationship going on amongst Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, I, I just wonder if Jesus was so protective of the Holy Spirit uh, because he can't defend himself. Inside, just so to speak. Um, Father speaks and tells the Israelites when they're doing right and when they're definitely doing wrong. Um, Jesus speaks and tells the Pharisees when they're doing wrong. But the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. Uh, I can't see any anywhere that the Holy Spirit defends himself. Um, it, it, it's so it. it Jesus just may be saying, look, this is this person is a very special person and you need to be um, especially careful when you're addressing the Holy Spirit. Mm. But that's just a thought. Uh, I've no uh, uh, references for that. One other important aspect of the Trinity is that it rescues us from the concept that God had to create us because he was lonely. God has never been lonely. He's, there's a three and a one. They're completely self-sufficient in themselves. They have no need of a creation at all. Um, but they chose to create. Um, they didn't have to create because they were lonely. Or, or that they needed people, or that they needed humans to worship. They don't need us to worship them. They delight in our worship, yes, but they don't need it. Um, oh, Ralph, that's uh, that's so good to hear, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, totally agree with that. God needs nothing. Uh, you know, uh, th there's nothing we we have which God can't do without if yeah. that's if that's uh, obtuse enough for everybody um yeah uh, he needs nothing he he gives everything he yeah. anything we have that's my pen again. from from uh, which is godly it has come from god uh, I'll just let my clock finish. That's it. Um, yeah, so, yeah. We shouldn't... That's, uh, somebody once said, you know, we're basically worms of the dust and of no importance. 
but on the other hand, we were important enough for Jesus to die for us. Yeah. Um, and that sums us up. But we can't we can't get the idea that, that as you say, God needs us for anything apart from to partake in his uh, universe, his creation. Amen. That the Holy Spirit is passing on. And Jesus baptizes in the, us in the Holy Spirit. And fire. That's that's huge. Uh, more than again, more than I can explain. Why do you think Jesus had to send the Holy Spirit or what were the mechanics behind that, if you like? How did it come about that he sent the Holy Spirit to us? You mean how does that transaction take place? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's about right. That's a much better way of putting it, Linda. <laughs> I, I don't understand fully what you're asking. I don't either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but, how do you know when we're right or wrong? <laughs> it's a good answer. <laughs> do, you mean, do you mean how did he send the, how did the Father or Jesus send the Holy Spirit? Well, yes, yeah, he says here, uh, when the Advocate comes, that's the Holy Spirit, whom I will send to you from the Father. Um, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. It's getting very close to the time that Jesus died and ascends to, to the Father. What, why didn't Jesus baptize? That's in the Holy Spirit when he was still here as a human. It's kind of what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Well, in a sense, when he sent the disciples out, um, he he uh, imparted his anointing uh, which is a little different than what he's saying about the promise I, I think um, that was a very clear um, uh, very clear uh, beginning uh, of a new age where his people um, are not just, well, I think of, you know, the, the prophets, for instance, they were, uh, you know, they were especially called out for a particular purpose. And, uh, and now, uh, this is a time where um, Jesus is going to be glorified in all his people uh, because there's a uh, we're, be, we're becoming living stones uh, uh, built on uh, a stone that was rejected by all. Jesus. And uh, this is a new era. You know, he gave a new commandment. He said, a new commandment I give to you. 
that you love one another. Uh, that wasn't just a warm, fuzzy feeling that we give to one another, but that love uh, sets free uh, one another, that empowers one another, that dominates their life with one another. Uh, this was a new era when he was saying, wait for the promise that I'm going to send you. And, uh, and, and it was a very, it was a time of, uh, time for the church to be built or we're the living stones, not just a group of people gathering in a temple, but we, we become the body of Christ. We become the temple of God. You see, not a seal on us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians says that. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians yeah. chapter 1. And and also that, that this time was very important because uh, Jesus paid the price of our um, hard heart, <laughs> our stubbornness. Our, you know, he paid that price so if that is broken as Ezekiel said I, you know that God's going to give us a new heart and a new spirit we're going to do this differently yeah I, I think I think also in the Old Testament uh, it says uh, Hosea is it uh, that he'll put out his spirit upon all flesh. Yes. <laughs> so you know that that's um, that's us. Um, Psalm so. sixty six. I think that's next mention of that. Yep. So yeah, the the. the Everything that, that Jesus was doing uh, was fulfilling the, the Old Testament prophecies. Um, and that's at the, the birth of the church, there was major prophecy fulfilled in, in, the, the, uh, in the 120 who were baptized in the Holy Spirit at that point. They were, they were true believers, and they, and at uh, Pentecost they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, so the Holy Spirit is vital to us, to the church to the church in general and to every member of the church. Um, we are born again of the Spirit. Um, and I take that to mean we are born again of the Holy Spirit. Um, Amen. So he's, he is... A very special person and very special to us. Um, he, we mustn't grieve the Holy Spirit. That's Ephesians 4.30 and that's where it also says, Linda, that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And we mustn't quench the Holy Spirit. That's in First Thessalonians five nineteen. Um, so it's very it's very possible it would appear that we can grieve the Holy Spirit, 
And we must take great care not to. And we can also quench the Holy Spirit by our attitudes to one another and perhaps even our attitudes to the Holy Spirit. We can quench the Holy Spirit. And Paul, it's quite clear that we shouldn't do that. And Jesus said we should definitely never blaspheme the Holy Spirit or sin against the Holy Spirit. My, uh, my do you think shop. Bless? What's that? Go ahead, Ralph. You go ahead, Nick Mickey. Go make it. Uh, my Calvary Chapel churches would teach me that we have an indwell, a permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit that happened only after Jesus was resurrected. So at my other study, the one person asked and said, well, what about, and I said that didn't happen in before then. And he's, he thought that the people who wrote the Bible, they always had a permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And he said, what about Psalm 51? where it says, don't take your Holy Spirit from me, David says, uh, when, after he did all those sins. And I was thinking that that's probably after he did repented, you know, that I think the Holy Spirit would come and go. Otherwise, Solomon, he started out good with God, and, and then he did a lot of sins with these other false gods. He built altars to them, you know, and then I think he repented at the end of his life, and that's when the Holy Spirit would come back to him. So I think before the old in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could come and go in a person, but after the resurrection for the believers, it's a permanent uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. What what was that, Ralph? You were going to talk about? I, I agree with what you're saying, Mickey. Um, what do you think blasphemy against the Holy Spirit can mean in practice? Okay. Any thoughts on that? Because Jesus said you will not be forgiven if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And I am convinced he meant it. How does that sit with us? What does that mean? Yeah, that's, that's what Ralph's asking. <laughs> That's when they were accusing him of having a devil when, yep. he actually, when he had the Holy Spirit. They were calling the Holy Spirit a devil. Yep. What, what, what do you think happened at that, at that time? Because I think it is quite important. Say that again. What happened at the time that, that Mick has just mentioned where the Pharisees accused Jesus of... Uh, doing the works of God by the devil. And uh, he he said to him, that that's, uh, sin against the Holy Spirit is will not be forgiven. What was happening uh, in the Pharisees that Jesus was so um, severe with them? I think for today, the that would the equivalent for today would be those who reject the gospel. They're rejecting the Holy Spirit, and so there, it's the acts of the Holy Spirit was the evidence enough that they should have believed that He was the Messiah. And instead, they were saying it was the it was the the devil doing it. Yeah, that's that's one way. I think that's that that I think rejecting the gospel is not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I, I, I you know because. I rejected the gospel, you know, when I was an unbeliever, and that, that was, I, I don't even, it doesn't even cross my mind that that would be blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. I think it's much more uh, specific and much more severe than that, and that's why it is so severe. Yeah, I think at the time that... Um... This in scripture that we're you're referring to, um, 
the uh, Pharisees were, their hearts were really uh, closed to God. I mean, there was a, their way was the right way. And uh, whatever Jesus was saying, you know, they were in defiance of, of him. And uh, several times wanting to stone him and kill him. Um, but I, I think Jesus was, um, you know, really looking at their hearts and, and their, just how committed they were to, um, you're not the Messiah. You know, you, you are, you are, your father's the devil. You know, I think he were, you know, they were really committed inside in uh in those in that direction i think that's right on um uh, jesus as we've read in the the first half of john 15 uh they hated me and they also hated my father uh they 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 thought they were worshiping god but they they, they were full, full of hatred for that type of god if you like jesus father <clears throat> What I, my own impression is that the Pharisees saw the miracles that Jesus was uh, was doing. They actually recognized that this must be something special. But they were so jealous of him that they told the people that he was doing these miracles under the power of the devil. But they didn't. They didn't actually believe that. They were actually lying deliberately uh, against the Holy Spirit, um, and they they would say anything uh, to discredit Jesus. Um, but I actually think they recognised this must be from God, and they 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 they, they chose to. <clears throat> to say something terrible in order to try and discredit Jesus. And Jesus said, well, more or less said, you're not discrediting me. You're actually discrediting the Holy Spirit. And that is unforgivable. Now, I've heard lots of Christians get in, tie themselves in knots about perhaps I have uh, blasphemed the Holy Spirit, and I've got unforgiven sin. Um, any, I, I've never come across any Christian who I could put in that category, no matter how badly they've sinned, um, because it, it's not something that um, anybody but uh, who, the likes of the Pharisees would commit, and that they want their own way and they're prepared to reject God's way to such an extent that they would say, this is this is the devil at work. Um, it's not the Holy Spirit. Uh, so the, the, I, I, I would think there are very few who would do that. Bob gave me an example. I asked him once about this. And Bob gave me an example of what went on in one of the, the churches he was he was in. I think it might even have been at Sulphur Springs <clears throat> before my time. And he said there was this father and son who opposed him all the time. Uh, whenever Bob uh, would suggest something, they would oppose it and say, no, this is not for the church. Uh, and the Lord said to, to Bob, now, what I want you to do for a period is uh, agree with this, this man and also his son um, and uh, 
even although it's, it, it doesn't seem a spiritual thing that they're, they're suggesting they do, I want you to support them. Um, and <clears throat> so Bob would, uh, in the meetings, the church meetings, he would say, well, you know, if we thought about doing this, they would say no, just because it was Bob who was saying it, and they would suggest something else, and Bob would say, okay, I think that's that's what we should do. Um, and many people couldn't understand what what was doing, but he was being obedient to what God had, had told him. Uh, and they opposed and opposed and opposed everything that Bob uh, had done. And in fact, what they were doing was they were opposing the Holy Spirit in Bob. And um, that sin was not forgiven. But they didn't lose their salvation over it. What happened was that the son, his wife, uh, the son's wife, had an extramarital affair which became public. And the whole of the two of them, their, their whole um, lives were wrecked by this uh, in the church. Um, and uh, they both resigned from the, the leadership of the church because of it. Um, they still went along to the church, but they were very much uh, had, had to take a back seat uh, because of the of this uh, extramarital affair, and they were both highly ashamed, obviously, of, of what had gone on. Um, and uh, Bob said they didn't. The sin wasn't forgiven, but they were punished for it. And the punishment was limited, in that the uh, they they had to leave the church the, the church leadership. Um, or they felt they had to leave. Nobody asked them to, but they they were so, uh, in a sense, destroyed by 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 the events that they left the church leadership, uh, and that certainly made a lot of sense to me uh, when Bob told me about that. So although the the sin against the Holy Spirit is not forgiven, uh, the it is punished. And through the punishment, the people are are restored, but not forgiven. How does how does that sound? Well, not well, forgiven because uh, their hearts were not uh, repentant. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but they also attacked the Holy Spirit and His workings through Bob. They didn't say that, but that's what they were doing. They were continually, persistently opposing uh, Bob as a man of God. Uh huh. So, yeah, yeah. I know at a time that I was. Uh, uh, working, I've got about 45 years of, uh, of being in the optical business, uh, making glasses and fitting them. And <clears throat> from time, from time to time, um, I would clash with somebody else. And my, uh, way of dealing with that would would be I would ask the Lord to give them a promotion somewhere else. <laughs> and he, he would them. do that. He would do that. <laughs> so you you were blessing your enemies and it worked out for the good there, didn't it? <laughs> yes. For me it did. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I think God would make it clear if we if we had had blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think I think it takes a lot of resolve to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, uh, but it can be done, um, and it's not something that we want to happen. 
it, I don't think it happens by accident. I think it happens, it, it's somebody who is resolutely opposed to God's workings, uh, who believes they're, they're, they're uh, doing the right thing uh, for God, but resolutely opposing uh, the workings of God and the workings of the Holy Spirit. I don't think we no, do that. Uh, I know in uh, First Peter, second chapter, uh, um, Peter says to the to the church, uh, "Put away all bitterness, all deceitfulness, uh, all for, false virtues, and uh, put on." The uh, uh, the newborn. Well, let me just instead of paraphrasing that second verse, like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow in your salvation. And uh, so that's we're we're going to be confronted with sin in our own lives, even though that we may be long-time Christians, we're going to be confronted with uh, sin. And it's so important to be able to uh, find repentance and the grace from God to be healed and stay involved with Jesus because he is the vine. Amen. Okay, we're nearing time up, I think, Linda. Yeah. Uh, Kim, could you close for us? Yes. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for our time together and the discussion about your, your Holy Spirit. Um, help us uh, to walk with the Holy Spirit in our days and our daily lives. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, Linda, you're catching up with us uh, over here. We changed our clocks last week, so you're changing yours on Sunday. Is that correct? Yes, we are. Thank you uh, for reminding me. I was, I was, it was my intent to bring that up, and so we're going behind. We're falling back. So next week. We'll, That's a time change to bear in mind for those are, who are not going back this week. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be this time next week, in fact. Yeah, I was, was going to say, we'll, we won't be at the same time. We'll be at the same time. The same time just isn't at the same time. <laughs> glad, and, you cleared, glad you cleared that up. <laughs> ignorance, ignorant Southern Hemisphere person, that means that we'll be starting now. Yes. <laughs> right. That's what fooled me last week. I thought you'd I thought you'd change your time. Yeah. When do you change yours, Alan? Uh last week. So I started oh, early. Yeah, yeah. I started I started an hour ago and it's gonna be this time next week. Yeah. Okay. And, and along that note, I'm going to say I'm going to be out of town the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I know some of you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but <laughs> I, I suppose we won't be having <laughs> a meeting that day. <laughs> so that, that's the... that will be on uh, November the 23rd. Oh, okay. No, no, no. November the 22nd. Yeah. That particular week, and I'll send out the reminder saying there's no meeting 
Oh, and yeah. Unless oh, somebody yeah. else is trying to pick up the uh, torch yeah. there. <laughs> At the moment, you're the only one that can host it, Linda. So that's okay. All right. Yeah. Just yeah, remind, well, remind us the week the week before and send yeah. out a, an email. That'd be fine. Okay, we'll see you next week, guys. All righty. Bye.